fuck. Shotguns. I'm not kidding. But I'll still use them. Even though I've already referenced my last video, we'll do a quick recap just to get up to speed. Three major points were changed. The target acquisition around somebody's head. I'm not going into that in this video. The next one was cone angle, and then the impact of ADSing your shotgun. For this one here, they say that the cone angle is no longer adjusted by the range stat, only by the sub archetype. I'm going to use this bullet point to talk about the range stat in general, okay? It can be broken out into two major segments. Number one, damage drop off, okay? Number two, exactly what they talk about, okay? The cone angle and then interestingly enough they broke out a third bullet point talking about aiming down sights except after all the testing these actually fall into the exact same categories as the range stat and have their own impacts of themselves the way i've decided to explain this to you is talk about each piece on their own for example cone angle or pellet spread and how it's impacted by the range stat and by the ads stat so both bullet points on one topic and then i'm going to talk about the damage drop off impacts again from the range stat and from the ads stat keep in mind i actually might swap these but Either way, that's how we're doing it. Then don't worry, at the very end, I'm gonna follow one of my typical models, which is that the proof is in the pudding, followed by what my recommended God roll is. Warning, we have a disclaimer. No, I am not a Bungie employee. No, I do not know exactly how they code the game. This is 100% based on my own testing. If you find different results, hey, cool, all the power to you. I'm just trying to share what I found. So let me just give you my quick graph demonstration of what happened here. I'd like to preface this with the fact that I actually love Bungie and I appreciate the amount of hours that this entire company puts into this game so that all of us have something to look forward to every day after work for work on the weekends whatever okay so when i poke fun sometimes it's just for shits and giggles to start off, you need a baseline. We'll call this the shotgun happiness. Lots of videos out there. I highly recommend a lot of fallouts videos for figuring out what one hit kill distances are. Then a new season's coming out. And I actually appreciate when a meta shifts in one direction or another because it keeps things fresh. So you've got employee number one. You know what? Let's buff the damage drop off on range. Let's make our shotguns do more damage at a further distance. That's right. They buff the damage drop off of shotguns across the board when not aiming down the sights. Now, I don't expect them to put in every single detail in their patch notes because then their patch notes would be 50 pages and no one would read them. But let me just bring you back to my last video to refresh your memory. Here we go. I lined up at 11 meters pre-patch just to show the impacts that ADS had on your shotgun. At the end of the video, you'll see I did 8 to 9 damage with my max range dust rock blues at 11 meters. post patch i went to the exact same position measured 11 meters on the dot using darcy hit him again check it out Now this is opposite of what we all thought. Bringing up that paragraph from the TWAB again, it says aiming down sights no longer adjusts the effective range for this weapon archetype. Lots of people were confused about what this statement meant because there's so many things it can mean. But then if you actually look at the last word patch notes, there's a little hint in there that clarifies at least partially what they define effective range to be. Damage fall off. That being said, I still think everyone was expecting ADS to be completely shit. Everyone thought that the ADS damage would be brought down to what the non-ADS damage would be. So looking at this example right here, I would have thought these 13s and 14s in the top left-hand corner were suddenly going to become 8s and 9s. And that would have really sucked because then it's like, okay, what's the point in ADSing? Unless maybe you have full choke. But conversely, it turns out that they actually just left the ADS the same. Bottom left corner, 13 to 15 damage. I recognize there's some 15s in there. But as we all know, destiny's destiny. Either way, ADS actually stayed the same for damage drop-off. And they buffed non-ADS damage drop off. Oh, this is wonderful then. Yeah, but let's dumpster on that pellet spread. <laughs> That's right, we're done talking about damage drop off. Now we're talking about cone angle. It's honestly pretty straightforward. They specifically say that the range stat will no longer affect the cone angle and that's exactly what they did. It just sucks because it's worse than what people thought. In my last video, I showed you how accuracy cones and aim assist cones worked and what the range did to these cones. And then I showed you what the average pellet spread size was for low range shotguns versus high range shotguns. So you were getting the benefit of both worlds. Well, you no longer get that. And during all of our tests, we were getting such dog 
dog shit results from every single shotgun, especially precision, that things just were not making sense to me. Like I thought, geez, how can they be that bad now? It's not as if one archetype is bad. All of them got shit on. How is this possible? So when I came back to this to compare the before and after of pellet spreads, I decided to look at every single pellet spread I could from low range, mid range, high range, ADS, non ADS, full choke, small bore, rifled, corkscrew, all of them. I'm not going to show you every single one, but I will lay out a pretty clear example, in my opinion, of what they did. Everybody loves nature, right? Let's enjoy some of that in the background while I slap on this grid paper and explain to you what these pellet spreads look like. So basically, first off, you've got this black dot. That's the size of a 70 range Dust Rock Blues. No ADS. In the past, when you increase the range from 70 up to 96, a max range Dust Rock, the pellet spread would get smaller, the red circle. Then you'd ADS that, it would get even smaller, the yellow circle. If you happened to have full choke, the spread was pretty much the same, but it could get smaller. So long story short, a max range shotgun while ADS could at least keep up for the most part with a full choke gun. Like full choke seemed to help no matter what the range was, but at least you didn't need it. Now to show you what I mean, I'll slap them on top of each other. See how you can't really see that yellow circle? It's because the full choke is basically the same size as a max range DRB while ADS. But what I want to point out is that pre-patch, there was clear gains to adding range to your gun. In fact, after after drawing all the circles pre and post patch, on average, you could actually decrease your pellet spread by nearly 10%. It varied based on archetype, but either way, I was seeing anywhere from 5% to 10% tighter cone when I added a bunch of range to a shotgun. Then on top of that, you'd ADS and you'd get this compound effect. So you'd get even more percentage. So I'll show you an example with the mind benders. That gray circle is the hip fire pellet spread average of a mind bender. That's a really low range. I think this one was 36 or 37. And then the maroon circle would be when you had a max range mind bender, the pellet spread would get tighter as well. You ADS, it gets even tighter. Full choke, slightly tighter, but basically the same size. When I slap them on top of each other, it's pretty clear that there was a massive advantage to adding range to your shotgun for pellet spread specifically. And then ADS would compound after that. Post patch, here's an example of the DRB hip fire. Does that look a little bigger to you? Yeah, it is. Here's an example of a max range DRB instead of the 70 range one, like that black circle. Exact same size identical literally it was plus or minus one percent every single measurement i took then you ads and ads still provides you a huge benefit with pellet spread as well as full choke shown in green but the fact of the matter is that look at this when i overlay them you don't see a black circle and that's because adding range does nothing to your pellet spread anymore yes adsing does and you can see it here with the mind bender too i'll just quickly flip through these but there's something that you might not have noticed here that i did mention earlier. What I really want you to focus on is that they didn't just fuck the range stat having an impact on our accuracy cone. Look at this. When I overlay the pre-patch average pellet spread diameter circles on top of the post-patch average diameter pellet spreads, look at what's happening here, okay? The darker color is post-patch. The brighter color is pre-patch. That top row is the Dust Rock Blues. The bottom row is the Mindbenders. Then look at ADS. Even though ADS was clearly still helping post patch look at the size between ads now versus before same thing with full choke so what i really wanted to bring to everyone's attention was that shotguns got this damage drop off buff which i assume bungie believes counteracts the fact that they made all of these accuracy cones bigger but it really doesn't and that's why i mentioned proof is in the pudding at the beginning of the video whatever you do make it hard as shit to test all shotguns got worse. Well, I don't know. Lightweight, they just stayed bad. They're misleading. I'll talk about that later. Before the patch, Hyper and I tested like 300 plus shots. I'm too scared to put a recommendation out there without really being sure. A lot of my videos have already been pretty analytical. I need to make sure I do enough tests. Well, we burnt way too many hours prepping an Excel sheet with all the one hit kill distances on all the different shotguns with all the different barrels thinking this will be easy. I'll just update a number after the patch and we're good to go. Well, the testing wasn't that smooth. 
smooth. We did over 600 tests, something like 690 some. My brain became mush. Part of it's because we did one resilience and six resilience, but I'm gonna lay out what my total conclusions are and throw up a few stats on the screen just so you can see where I'm coming from. However, the items that I want to address are, number one, test volume. I just touched on how much we did. The part that I wanna focus on is that I didn't consider a test done with a shotgun until we did nine shots with it. Highly respected content creator Fallout talks about his golden rule. Shotguns are inconsistent. You cannot shoot one shot or two shots or even three shots and all of a sudden say, yep, bam, shotguns will kill at this distance. When we were doing tests pre-patch, I was first doing five shots per and if, if we had three shots in a row, I would move on. And then there were a few weird anomalies, so I went back and retested a few of them. There were many occasions where we'd get two, three in a row and then all of a sudden we'd go through a dry spell and the damn shotgun just wouldn't put down the target. So post patch, I actually really wanted to pick a solid number that I could be very comfortable with, and that was nine times. Item number two, testing angle. This is so important. You can effectively increase the one hit kill range of a shotgun by almost over a meter if you're shooting or doing your tests at the wrong angle. Here's a quick example of what I mean by the angle. If you do your tests against the Titan that's literally the size of a garage, yeah, your pallets are gonna hit. If you do your tests against a hunter who's kind of sideways or a warlock in between, the results are different. Before the new DLC went live, I just looked at a bunch of my footage, and you know what? So many of my shotgun shots are in awkward, random, quick, split decision moments where my target isn't just standing there perfectly in front of me. If anything, I should do my tests as thin as possible, but I decided to just go with a warlock who's not as wide as possible. All right, I've made you wait like 97,000 years for this, so let's talk about the results. At five meters, all of them dropped the target nine out of nine times, whether I was ADS or hip firing. At six meters, ADS became important. When I was hip firing, precision frame shotguns were not killing the Guardian 50% of the time. In fact, it didn't really make much of a difference between minimum range and maximum range. It varied between three and four out of nine times. If I was ADSing my shotgun, that's where full choke started to shine a little bit more. Full choke went nine for nine at six meters, whereas rifled went eight for nine, and then corkscrew and small bore both went seven for nine. Seems like range is making a bit of a difference there, but then again, one out of nine times could easily be just pellet spread RNG, not necessarily help from the range stat. When we're talking about aggressive frame shotguns though, they did much better. When hip firing, rifled, full choke, corkscrew, small bore, all of them did seven to eight out of nine. More importantly, while ADSing, every single barrel and range went nine for nine. So I would say on an aggressive shotgun at six meters and below, range stat did not seem to matter, but it's seven and eight meters where things get a little tricky. At seven meters, precision frame shotguns start to really suck. When you're hip firing, even though you have a slightly tighter cone than an aggressive frame shotgun, they literally went one for nine almost every single scenario. If I ADS the shotgun, they still didn't do great. I went four for nine on corkscrew, four for nine on small bore, four for nine on rifled, and five five for nine with full choke. In my opinion, that's not really great because pre-patch, they were killing 100% of the time at seven meters. Aggressive frame shotguns were notably better than precision here. Rifled and full choke both went eight out of nine. Corkscrew and small bore went seven out of nine. Again, I feel like a difference of one out of nine isn't indicative enough to say, yes, it's absolutely better. It could easily be that I just had a streak of lucky pellet spreads, but either way, seven to eight is notably better than pretty much four across the board. Now let's talk about eight meters. All zeros are ones. It was extremely rare and I redid some of these tests just to see if pellet spread RNG could get a one hit kill. Well, yeah, if you get extremely lucky, you can get a kill at that distance with precision frame shotguns while hip firing. Eight meters is a whole other ball game. Without ADSing, the new pellet spread sizes completely F you. You basically need a unicorn situation in order to get a kill there. That's over 80 tests hip firing at eight meters. Now, when you do ADS, you give yourself a chance. Precision frame, I had three barrels get one out of nine, while the other ones all had zero. Precisions just couldn't do it. On to aggressives, they were a little bit more consistent than precisions, but still shitty. One out of nine, three out of nine, three out of nine, two out of nine. Like at this distance, the only time I would say range matters is if you happen to get a lucky pellet spread combined with the fact that range gives you a little bit of better damage drop off. Now at six resilience, it shuts a lot of these things down. At seven meters, it definitely decreased the number of kills. It almost shut down precisions completely 
completely. Those went from averaging roughly four out of nine to one out of nine, whereas aggressives went down from that seven to eight out of nine to about five or six out of nine. So it definitely isn't enough to bring the aggressive shotguns to less than 50% efficiency, but the numbers are the numbers. They're slightly lower. That is what it is. And then at six meters or closer, the resilience didn't really come into play. Now let's talk about lightweight shotguns. During these tests, I started to get super excited about lightweight shotguns because the spread was so incredibly consistent. It basically had no RNG. The size of the pellet spread is always tight. And then we coincidentally tested it at eight meters first, just for shits and giggles because of that. And sure as shit, it left the Guardian one shot. And I thought, oh my God, these things are just as good as the aggressives at eight meters. How the hell is this happening? Like these are clearly gonna be the meta. But then I tested them at seven meters and it was the same thing. It would leave the Guardian with a bee's dick of health. And then I tested them at six meters. And that's where it started to finally get the one hit kill potential. But at six and a half, back to doing basically nothing and you'd have to get lucky. So that's why I said that they were misleading because they have such a tight pellet spread that you can hit your Guardians with a lot of pellets very consistently, but they do such little damage that you're gonna lose because if you're up against another Mindbenders at that distance, let's say, you shoot them, they shoot you, they have a better chance of one hit killing you. Because I figured a lightweight shotgun what is the benefit? The benefit is the two tap ability. So then we tried to find the two tap distance of a lightweight shotgun and it's 10 meters. If you could two tap a guardian at say 15 meters or 13 meters. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that would be the way to go. Just intentionally shoot from further out and shoot twice. But the fact of the matter is that you can only consistently two shot your guardian from around 10 meters. So you're only gaining two meters there. And by the time you go to shoot your second shot, their player has probably slid more than a meter and then they'll one hit kill you or they'll They'll have shot you at 10 meters and then they'll melee you by the time you try to shoot that second shot. So I actually truly believe that lightweight shotguns are still bad. Okay, every time I make a video, I think I'm gonna keep it down to eight or nine minutes and somehow it's fucking 20,000 billion hours. Sorry, hope this was helpful. I'm gonna quickly summarize what we talked about. Number one, Bungie completely effed all pellet spreads across the board. Number two, they did slip in a little mini non-ADS damage fall off buff. Number three, the range stat definitely no longer tightens the cone. That sucks, but ADS is still really necessary. So even though they said it will no longer impact the effective range, it definitely does because that's what you got to do to tighten your pellet spread. You know what I mean, boys? Okay, that was inappropriate. We did over 600 tests with shotguns and I can confidently say that aggressive shotguns are without a doubt the best shotgun to use still. I actually feel like precision shotguns were a closer comparison pre-patch because their pellet spread was just tight enough that it could actually keep up. Whereas now, since everything got bigger, it doesn't really matter because you're not hitting enough pellets consistently regardless. I counted the number of pellets in all tests and the average number of pellets hitting your target from pre-patch to post-patch, understandably so, went way down. It's entirely because of this that we're not killing people at eight and nine meters anymore. And now we're only guaranteed a kill at six meters, I'd say. And then at seven, you should get a kill if you're using aggressive. And at eight, good luck with your RNG. Number three or four, I don't know. Does range matter? Yes and no. I would say when I look back at all the numbers that I collected, range seems to matter if it's drastic enough. So for example, with an aggressive shotgun, when I tested like the absolute bare minimum range shotguns versus the absolute maximum range shotguns, there's definitely a difference there in consistency. But when I compared something that's 10 range less, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Of course, if there's no better alternative, add range to your shotgun. Lightweight shotguns seemed like they had extremely high potential but I personally don't think that they do. You can absolutely disagree with me if you want though. My recommended God roll would be an aggressive shotgun like the Mindbenders or the new one coming out with quick draw and then either slide shot or opening shot with full choke. And then anything you want for that last column, really I'd say accurized or salt mech. The reason I say slide shot or opening shot is because now that our pellet spreads suck and you're gonna hit less pellets on average, you need perks like these to boost you outside of that limiting distance. For example, I tested a 45 range mind benders with slide shot versus a max range full choke. And slide shot was actually enough to make it consistently outperform full choke. Slide shot is 
unbelievable, you guys. The new shotgun's gonna have opening shot. I unfortunately didn't have any shotguns with opening shot to test, but on hand cannons, it has a similar effect as rangefinder on your first shot. So if it does just as much on a shotgun, that's huge. If you look back at some of your PvP matches and you feel like more of your shotgun shots are while you're in the air, not sliding, then hey, maybe that's better for you. I officially need to throw my monitor outside the window. Fallout, if you're watching this, I don't know how you do this every single time there's an update. This was insanely tedious. I just, I just gotta say goodbye.